Okay, what's up guys? I am out in another random rice paddy and in today's video I want to talk to you guys about three travel video mistakes to avoid. So let's get into it. So these are three common mistakes that I see people making all of the time. If you guys want to avoid spending all of this time learning how to not do these things yourselves, just take some notes on this video and figure out how not to do all of the mistakes that we all usually make. I'm guilty of these mistakes myself, I'm pretty sure I've done all of them at least once. So. Don't be discouraged, but let's get into the first one. Mistake number one and the first thing that we're gonna talk about is something that I see in a lot of beginner filmmakers, but I often see this in more advanced filmmakers as well, and that's bad exposure. Overexposing or underexposing is something that people do way too often, and it's really gonna make you struggle once you get into editing and trying to work with the colors of your clips. If you overexpose something and you lose all the details in your highlights, there's no way that you can bring that back later on and the same with shadows, if you underexpose your image and later on try and lift the shadows, there's gonna be so much grain in those shadows that it's gonna really give you headaches and it's something that you can so easily avoid. Something you guys can try to do if you are struggling to get perfect exposure is use a histogram if your camera allows. So you can't always trust the little LCD screen on your camera, especially in like a really sunny day or something, it's hard to see and it might look really dark where in actual fact you're losing some of the detail in your highlights and your image is overexposed. So set up that histogram, the little square in the bottom of your camera. If everything is over to the left, that means that your shadows are too dark and it's a little bit underexposed. And if everything's all the way over to the right and there's spikes on the right hand side, that means that some of your highlights are getting lost and that your image might be overexposed. You wanna kind of look at that histogram and get the waveform kind of evenly spaced out and spread out through the middle of it. And that's gonna allow you to get the best exposure that you possibly can. The next thing I wanna talk about is kind of a part two to this first mistake. And that is once you put all of your clips over into your editing software and you start working on them, it's all too easy to skip right to the exciting part, which is the color grading part, which is really awesome and really fun. It's, get, it's where you get to add all of that spice to your video but there's something that's arguably more important and that is color correction. You wanna make sure that each clip and especially clips in the same sequence and clips that take place right after each other are matched in exposure. So if you have one clip that is slightly underexposed and your next clip is overexposed, once you cut those together, it really has this like jarring effect and takes away from the magic. Sometimes it even looks like a whole different scene. What you wanna do is make sure that those exposures are correct and throughout that whole scene, it should all match. And the same goes for your white balance. So while you're in there messing with each one of those clips exposures, just change the white balance, make sure that it matches. There's nothing worse than having a really warm clip and then cutting to a different angle of the same scene and the clip is all of a sudden really cold and underexposed. Just before you get to that color grading, make sure you guys color correct, and then you can do the exciting color grading part. The next mistake that we're gonna talk about is not editing to the music. And what I mean by this is not necessarily cutting to the beat of the music. I hope most of you guys are doing that already. So you should definitely like change your clips on important like impacts on the music and everything. Definitely keep doing that, but that is not actually what I'm talking about when I say edit to the music. So what I mean by this is slightly more in depth, and I mean really editing to the music, to the vibe of the music and the pacing of the music, and making sure that your clips actually match the music in movement and feeling and vibes and everything like that, not so much just that cutting on the beat. For example, something that I like to do, once I have my clips that I'm gonna be editing, and once I have a track selected, I like to just take a little bit of time to listen to the track over and over again, make sure I get to know it really well, make sure I get to know different parts of the tracks. Maybe there's like a really cool beginning that's slow and smooth, and then maybe a bit of a build up to like a really cool drop, and there's a whole lot of impact, and then maybe after the drop, there's a more upbeat, fast paced scene. Once I figure out those parts, I'm gonna think of which ones of my video clips are gonna work best in each of those parts. Something else to keep in mind is that you can use the movements in your shots to match like sounds, of the music and it's really cool once you get into it and you'll start to notice it and there's this amazing thing that starts to happen where it's almost like 
as cheesy as it sounds is your clips start to like almost do a dance to the music and they really flow with it and work so well with it and that's what I mean by cutting to the music so what I want to do here is show you guys two different examples the first one being a video that is cut to the beat but not necessarily cut to the music and the vibe of it and then the second one is going to be the same video clips and the same track but it's going to be edited in a way that really flows with that music and how we've been talking about so check out this first one and see what you guys think Okay, so pretty cool, right? Not a bad video. There's some like cool clips in there. The track that we selected is pretty cool and fits with the clips quite well. And we cut our clips to the beat of the music, but now doing all of the things that we mentioned and putting our clips in the right places that flow with the music and really build with the track, let's see how different this one turned out. That is way different right by just moving those same clips around it's all the same clips and it's the same track just putting them in the right place makes a huge difference and i hope you guys agree that the second one is much much better the third and final tip is going to be not cutting down your edit enough and what i mean by this is i'm sure you guys have heard so much about story is king and story 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 if you shoot your video on a potato as long as you got good story then your video is going to be just fine. Don't worry, I'm not going to be talking about that, but what I am going to talk about is that your video does need a bit of a purpose. The reason I say this is that when you are cutting down your video, and the mistake that I'm saying is that videos aren't getting cut down enough, meaning that there's too much excess clips, maybe your video ends up being seven minutes, whereas actually all of the golden footage is only actually about three minutes, but the video gets finished at that seven minute mark and published and it goes out and that's how it is. What I want to try and help you guys with and show you something to avoid is that you need to cut it down way, way more. And the reason why I'm bringing up the story thing is because once you find a purpose for your video and there's something that you're showing in your video or something that your video is like showing and doing, it makes it much easier to see whether or not each one of those clips actually needs to be in the video or not and if it serves to the purpose of what that video is going to be about. Sometimes when you're editing your video you might have a video clip that you're not really sure whether it should go in or not and maybe it's even a really beautiful clip and it's filmed in the most beautiful way and it's of a beautiful scenery or something but maybe it doesn't necessarily add to the purpose of your video and it doesn't bring anything more to the video and for that reason it doesn't need to be in it and you need to cut it out and not include it. And it's kind of a hard thing to do and I totally understand it. A lot of the time I get almost attached to clips, maybe for something like if I know in my mind that to get that clip took a lot of work and it was really difficult and maybe I had to climb up onto a top of a rock to look down onto the thing or something. I know how much hard work went into that clip and I, it might be more difficult to cut it out of the final video. But you have to remember that the viewer doesn't know how much hard work went into that nor do they care so take the clip out maybe save it for another video where it's more appropriate and it does add to the purpose but you got to be relentless don't get attached to your clips make sure if they're not adding to the purpose of your video and further elevating that message that you're trying to show in that video you gotta cut him you gotta cut him and this tip goes even more so for travel videos simply because it's so easy to film a travel video in the way where it's just a whole bunch of random different clips because that's what people often want to do and that's completely fine you're enjoying your time and you're just kind of capturing clips as you go and you're not really like taking it 
that seriously and that's totally fine and I totally get that and that's awesome and you guys must keep doing that but if you do want to step it up to the next level you need to make sure that you're shooting for that purpose and any clips that aren't adding to that they're out there you go those are my top three things to avoid when making travel videos don't feel bad if you're doing these I am definitely guilty of doing all of these things at least once and I probably still do some of them to this day so don't be discouraged just take these pointers and utilize them and introduce them into the next time you guys are shooting and avoid having to spend all of the time learning this yourself. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Peace.